Buenos dias. Bonjour. And continuing on with a decoding the emerald tablets of Tuf, of Jehuti, of Fult, the Atlantean, <clears throat> and the emerald tablets contain a history of Atlantis, of Atlantis, its mechanical and scientific achievements. The manner it sank below the Atlantean waves, the colonizing of ancient Egypt, and even to the construction of the Great Pyramid. But their real significance is that they contain the keys to the unfoldment of the heavens, the earth, and the divine soul of man. These tablets are so written that the words respond to attuned thought waves, releasing the associate mental vibrations of an exhilarating rhythm in the mind of the reader. Thus, the magnanimous wisdom of the author is revealed. A casual read will immediately glimpse the thrilling beauty of its rhythm. The truth seeker who is willing to give them a more intensive study will open avenues to the most intrinsic wisdom, wisdom of unutterable majesty and beauty. These tablets are so written that the words respond to attuned thought waves. Essentially, if you're at all familiar with the Emerald Tablets, <clears throat> um, and you can make the correlation, like you can, in your mind right now, without referring to either of these documents, the Emerald Tablets, and comparatively, the Sermon on the Mount by Jesus the Christ, in my mind, in my estimation, it is as if the same person, the same voice, were speaking from the Sermon on the Mount of that which you find in the Emerald Tablets. In fact, my first exposures to the Emerald Tablets, I, I was just, it was, I was floored with this, <clears throat> with the attuned thought waves releasing the associate mental vibrations of an exhilarating rhythm. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and you can find the Emerald Tablets, both the uh, Emerald Tablets of the Atlantean, both the Atlantean Emerald Tablets. That's it. You can look on YouTube, and there's, there's one particular version that I'm fond of, and it's the psychedelic version where... The voice has reverb and there's, you know, like a little uh, bit of frequency that's sort of in the background, but and it has nice images that. But anyway, the, and, the, and the reading of the Emerald Tablets is, is done rather well. It's a pleasant sort of mid pitch, mid frequency octave uh, voice reading. But anyway, I have listened to that version hundreds of times. And I can attest to the veracity in my experience that the, the energies, the frequencies, the knowledge released from the wisdom of the tablets saw me through some kind of dense areas in my life. Like, I, you know, if I, man, if I woke up one morning and I felt all this pressure or I just felt, you know, I would put, I would start listening to those tablets and uh, you know, at the end of listening to them, there's, I mean, and no matter how many times you've listened to them, you, you will always be exposed. There'll be some new connection made, some new light bulb will go off, but it's always, you know, a new experience. So yes, you can read them, which I've done a few times, but I've listened, listened many more times, thanks to, you know, YouTube and all that. So but the words, the voice, the teachings, 
especially what the Christ was teaching in the Sermon on the Mount, you know, um, and throughout, you know, all the New Testament, it's, you, you can see the correlation. This is of the same lineage, the same voice with the same lessons to be learned. So, you know, when you're decoding the Emerald Tablets, keep that in mind. And also keep in mind that the lessons of the light, the brotherhood of light, the sisterhood of light, whatever, uh, you know, light. There's no gender in, in consciousness and in light. There's gender if you choose to experience that and, and separation and this 3D fear-based reality. Ultimately, we're all fractals of source light. And that is our part of our mission and journey here in this 3D realm is to arise above these illusions of separation and let unless you choose not to but you when the event takes place or when the final frequency modulations from harmonic universe to harmonic number harmonic universe number two take place you know that's the dividing line so get right with the light get right with the light <clears throat> or not Continue on with your journey in ego separation and Luciferian madness because that is the world of the ego, the world of the satanic matrix, the Luciferian matrix. Man, I mean, I, I don't know. You can look at it any way you want. You can look at it with a very masochistic, you know, sort of tough guy like, you know, but man, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I Give me the light. Give me the light of truth. Give me the freedom of truth. Uh, because I'm going to tell you that other path, the path of the ego, is, is, a, is a path of madness. And it's a path of servitude. You're a slave. That's what's so ironic about the ego path, the satanic path, though, is that, you know, you are a slave. You, you, are, part, you are part of the hive mind. And it's very hier hierarchical, it's very uh, structured, um, and there's no creativity in it. You're a slave. And so anyway, um, and here's an image of Thoth. Now, see, this is what's, uh, I want to um, point this out. Uh, there's a quote by Manly P. Hall that says, when, when mankind begins to be able to understand symbolism, and incorporate symbolism into their knowledge, then the veil from humanity's eyes will be pulled back just that much more and understanding and knowledge, the light of understanding will come about. Because, you know, this is where a, a fundamental Christian or somebody would get all, oh, they're, they're, these bird-headed gods and, oh, you know, child sacrificing. <clears throat> um, this is symbolic, okay? This is uh, this bird head. And, uh, and this, the eye of uh, Horus, the eye of Ra, these are uh, aspects of of the brain. Now I'm going to share real quick. <clears throat> a, um, I'm going to share from the introduction to my book that's going to be released on the 31st. Uh, I just I got the uh, manuscript turned in uh, last night. Uh, oh wait, no, that's the same. <laughs> Woo! Had a rough night. Woo! Here we go. So this is uh, from the introduction to my book that will be released uh, on the 31st. I think that's next Wednesday. But this is from the introduction, like a little subsection uh, part called Rept Reptilians Control the World, sort of. And I'm just going to read this so you have context. Insofar as those who operate primarily from the reptilian cortex, talking about the part of your brain, and are consumed with the base animal nature and those pursuits solely related to the flesh. The glorification of the flesh and the aggressive domination of others are the hallmark of those whose energies of brainwave frequencies emanate from this ancient area of the brain physiology. Perhaps in the dim mist of ages gone by, such preponderance of this reptilian brain functionality served the Terran of Harmonic Universe number one. However, to begin the path of ascension, these Session, Session is referring to Set, the brother of Horus, who was 
the dark god reptilian energy session must be mastered and the eye of horus must be the optical device that gazes with newfound energetic disposition upon a new earth and the golden age timeline of harmonic universe number two and so what we get at and what you learn is the eye of horus the eye of Ra. let's see pull that out of my you can see this is an actual uh, snapshot of the cross section of the brain physiology, pineal gland, and, and how this shape is. That's what that represents. Uh, the Thoth and his bird head are representative of th that area of the, the brain where higher functioning. And here we have a, another cross section of the brain. Uh, and so all this is very symbolic. All these images and uh, all this teaching very symbolic you know here we have the reptilian brain and instinctual or dinosaur brain the limbic emotional feeling brain and neocortex but m many people are operating from right now from this reptilian brain everything is this uh survival sort of a mode of existence uh and you know and it's played up by the rep or the digital matrix i thought I almost said reptilian matrix, but one in the same when you're talking about the digital matrix. But, you know, whether or not there's, you know, uh, fourth dimensional reptilians and all that stuff. Uh, ultimately, when you're looking outside of yourself, that's when you're giving your power away. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, I, I, it's just not necessary for my path to worry about and agonize over unless I'm writing, you know, Valtor, the interdimensional stories about these alien civilizations and, and everything, because there's enough work to do and I, there's enough to understand through symbolism. <clears throat> and at one time I lived as a reptilian, you know, where I was consumed with uh, basic, th these types of uh, energies that, that stimulate or come or, 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 or originate, <clears throat> emanate from the reptilian brain. So you see, this is all, you know, this stuff is symbolic. Uh, these images that we see, um, and and another interesting correlation. And again, this is from my introduction to my book, Academy of the Ascendants. It's volume three in the New Earth Golden Age Timelines trilogy of books that are meant to be a compendium of manuscripts to uh, aid a person upon their ascension path. And so we have a cross section of the brain, and the, and this is the Great Pyramid of Giza. Um, where, if you're familiar with that, the way the chambers are set up, uh, they align and when you have a cross section and the brain is uh, uh, superimposed over that, this is this big pyramid and all is, is representative of brain physiology. And this is like, you know, this was all stuff for initiation of, uh, you know, of aspirants on the path. And so, man, this, all this information is, it ties in and then here's, you know, um, a little bit more um, explanation of the symbolism. Um, you know, we have uh, basically like the Holy Land area, Jordan River. Um, and you see over here, this is uh, the brain area up here with the spinal cord and then the pelvic region. And as the Jordan River empties into the Dead Sea, so the spinal cord terminates in the section of anatomy known as Sodom, the region in which Josephus referred to as the Lake of Sodom. Jesus was not a savior until he was Christed. This is baptized or anointed of John, not by John. John, or Johannes, is the oil or ointment. The sacred fluids from the classroom, one yellow and the other white, is the milk and honey referred to in the Bible. The children of Israel, having been given the promise of return to this land flowing with milk and honey. And so you see uh, this eye of Horus, the falcon of Horus, this information uh, is, um, you know, all highly symbolic and it all has to do with brain physiology. Man, I wish I could get um, and yeah, we have these, bird, you know, uh, anyway, you, you get the point. So, yeah, and that was from, uh, oh, and here's the, I forgot to put that in. And here's, a, this is, again, from my book, Academy of the Ascendants. And here's the quote that I was uh, referring to by Manley P. Hall. When the human race learns to read the language of symbolism, a great veil 
will fall from the eyes of men. So and then I have, then I go on, the instinctual mind is located in the reptilian brain. The triune brain consists of the reptilian complex, the paleomammalian complex, limbic system, and the neomammalian complex, neocortex. The three brains in one, neocortex, thought, including planning, language, logic, whereas limbic system, emotion, feeling, reptilian instinct, survival, breathing, swallowing, heartbeat, Startle, fight or flight response, all that. We cannot, and then I have a quote by Albert Einstein, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when created them. We must use the higher mind to overcome the lower mind so that we may experience the fullness of the middle mind. And the answer is the middle way. Yes, Christ taught the middle way. And so um, anyway, kind of a <clears throat> roundabout rambling presentation of emerald tablets and but you see uh there's no need to disempower yourself to be caught up with the fanfare and all the the furor if you will the storm und drang of what's taking place in the outside 3d world because the more that you're giving your power away your your focus to that world you get your energy flows there you're better off uh, watching these videos such as I present, reading, uh, you're better off meditating, you're better off um, it, whatever it, you do. Um, I mean, you know, and everybody has their own hobbies, their own pursuits, but everything is frequency. All is frequency. And you maintain, it, it, it is best for your path right now to maintain uh, heart-focused uh, energies and vibrations of a high nature of the love nature because that is where your sanctuary exists um, don't get caught up in all the multiplicity of the 3d dimension because that is meant to keep people fragmented uh, keep people in states of fear anxiety low vibration consciousness and um, I choose not to be there it's just uh, it's in the land of Sodom way, in the lake of Sodom. I want to be up there with the, getting the Christ oil, being anointed, being an anointed one. Be sure to check out my book that will be released 31st next Wednesday. It's on Amazon. It's called Academy of the Ascendants. It's volume three in the New Earth Golden Age Timeline Trilogy. I hope this message and this video information dissemination broadcast finds you well. Namaste. Namaskaram.